In this video, I'd like to construct a frequency table by hand. We are told 20 individuals were surveyed about their blood type, and this isn't including the R H factor, which is you know the positive or negative, so we're just looking at the letter A, B, A, B, and O. And these are the observations that we got. What we want to do is to construct a frequency table, including columns for frequency and relative frequency. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the titles of the columns. This would be the observation of each data value. So the observation, if that will write, there we go. So our first column here is going to be the observations. And it looks like we have observations. We got A as a positive, a possible observation, B, A, B, and O. That's just listing the four things that we saw. We, I mean, we saw 20 particular observations, but they were only in this combination here, A, B, A, B, or O. Next, we want to look at just the frequencies. And so I'm just going to write frequency, not frequency, but frequency, the number of times each of those observations appears. And then we're going to look at the relative frequency. And this is going to be a percentage, but it's at, usually listed as a decimal. So it's a percentage in decimal form. So let's go through and count the number of observations, the times that A is seen. We have one. I'm going to go up here and just cross them out. One, two, three, four, five. So I had five values of A. For B, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven observations of B. AB appears one, two, two times. And I've already seen I made a mistake here. And O is going to repeat one, two, three, four, five times. So I automatically knew I made a mistake because if you add up these frequencies, we don't get 20. I can see that I actually missed an A. So instead of having a frequency of 5 for A, I'm going to have a frequency of 6. Now, what's going to be important is, in order to figure out the relative frequency, we need to know the total. I know the total just by looking at the top part where it says 20 individuals were surveyed. If for some reason you weren't given the number of individuals that were surveyed, you just were given a list of data values, you can go ahead and just sum all the frequencies. So the total frequencies, the total number of values here, 6 plus 7 is 13, 13 plus 2 is 15, 15 plus 5, that is 20. So, so far we have the observation and the frequencies, but now we want the relative frequency. Remember the relative frequency is a measure here that tells us relative to all other observations, how many times does that particular observation repeat, or is it is there in the data set. So to find this, we're going to take each value, so here we have 6, the relative frequency of 6 is going to be 6, it appeared 6 times, out of a total of 20. Right? You could keep it that way, but that's not usually how we see it. You know, we typically see it in terms of a decimal. So if I take 6 and I divide it by 20, this is going to be 0.3. So the relative frequency is 0.3. Another way that you could potentially see it is in percentage form. And you wouldn't know if that's an actual percent unless over here in the column you had a percentage sign. So if we wanted to write it as a percentage, 0.3 would be 30%. So let's continue. 7 appeared, B, blood type B appeared 7 times out of a total of 20, which is going to be approximately, if I pick up my calculator here, 35%. So as a decimal, that's 0.35, or 35%. If I look at AB, that appeared two times out of 20. That occurred, if we were to convert that to a decimal, that would be 0.10, or 0.1, which is equivalent to 10%. And finally, 5 out of 20, if we were to convert that to a decimal, would be 0.25. 
which would be if we were converted to a percentage would be 25 percent now a good check you should be able to add up this column of relative frequencies and get one right because each individual value was separated into A's and B's, A, B, and O. So this should, relative, if this is all relative to the other values, if we add this up, it should include all the values. So 0.3 plus 0.35 is 0.65. 0 0.65 plus 0.1 is 0 0.75. 0 0.75, this is going to be the sum will equal 1. Or if we were to sum up all the percentages, we would get 100%. We just constructed a frequency table by hand. Now, we're not going to look and we're not going to calculate the cumulative frequencies. The reason why I didn't want to include that here was because there's really no, in, at least in my opinion, no natural order here. Maybe A goes before B, but what about A, B, and O? So we wouldn't necessarily see cumulative frequencies unless there's a natural order. If there's an order, let's say we had letter grades, A, B, C, D, and F, then there may be some sort of cumulative frequencies that we could calculate and they would actually have practical significance. But here, since we can't really order these in any natural order, it doesn't make sense necessarily to do the cumulative frequencies. And that, to me, maybe medically there is that we could order them, but we're not going to get into that. Let's look at how we can use this data to construct a frequency table using StatCrunch.